So why is it important to know about the mother's comorbidities? So pregnancy as we know or as you've understood has a lot of physiological changes in order to combat with the pregnancy and the increasing demand. So there's going to be a demand versus consumption of oxygen and other requirements that's happening and there is a lot of physiological changes that's happened. Can the mother actually cope? Yes. So with or without the presence of the disease. In this scenario, you have the comorbidities. So primarily the most common one and the most dreaded one which is reported as the commonest cause of maternal morbidity and mortality is the hypertensive diseases. Next come the cardiac and the diabetes. These are the three main uh, culprits in the system and most of them are associated with uh, acquired diseases rather than just the inherited problems because often when they actually have a congenital problem they are dealt with and the risk potential is well understood. However, the lifestyle associated problems are the ones that are being ignored and the women end up having multiple problems. So here we are looking at the hypertension, cardiac disease and the diabetes. Next come the respiratory problems which are not uncommon, uh, endocrine, renal, autoimmune and the hematological issues. Anemia is again once again a common problem that we should be able to uh, diagnose, optimize and manage. So going back to physiology, a quick revision, every organ system actually undergoes certain changes, right? Primarily, the woman has hormonal changes. There's a lot of progesterone in the system and estrogen in association with the renin-angiotensin system. They have a lot of cardiovascular changes leading to fluid retention and increase in plasma volume. What happens to the respiratory system? There's increase in metabolic rate, increase in oxygen consumption and there is increased uh, minute ventilation. There is a decrease in the functional residual capacity and henceforth they are actually susceptible to hypoxia. In terms of nervous system, uh, they have uh, changes in terms of the anatomy where there is scoliosis as the baby builds up and there is actually problems uh, can be related to the, uh, you know, if they have actually uh, pre-existing nervous problems then we may have issues. What about the mechanical uh, issues? As we said, if there is a musculoskeletal as well as neuronal issues, they may have mechanical issues. Uh, metabolic are the chief issues that we are looking at because of the increased oxygen consumption and demand. And henceforth, how will the mother cope if there is an associated comorbidity? So, uh, let's look at the respiratory system. The common things being common, asthma is uh, common. We want to delineate and differentiate between a seasonal visa, uh, steady asthmatic who is controlled on inhalers versus a uh, asthmatic who is actually uh, quite significantly ill at every touch of uh, disease or a stimulus or an allergic uh, component that might she might be exposed to. So you want to optimize her pulmonary function, educate her with pulmonary exercises, refer to a pulmonologist that she might be seeing already and uh, optimize her condition. Is she a COPD, not just an asthmatic? Is, is there other problems associated? How would you optimize her? Is she got a restrictive component associated? For example, women with collagen disorders, women with uh, uh, skyphoscoliosis might well have lung collapse. Women with previous uh, pulmonary TB or collapsed lung can actually have uh, residual pulmonary fibrosis. So you need to know what your baseline capacity is.